Isu membabitkan individu yang memegang kad pertubuhan bangsa-bangsa bersatu bagi orang pelarian UNHCR sering menjadi isu utama apabila kehadiran mereka yang sebenarnya tidak diundang oleh warga tempatan hingga mencetuskan rasa tidak puas hati. Kebanyakannya hanya mengetahui pelarian adalah individu yang terpaksa mencari pelindungan apabila tempat asal masing-masing tercetusnya perang, keganasan atau penghapusan etnik. Pelarian yang terdiri daripada warga Myanmar, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Syria, Afghanistan dan Yaman terpaksa mencari pelindungan daripada ancaman berkenaan dan lebih tepat lagi mereka hanyalah mangsa keadaan yang tidak mempunyai hala tuju akibat masalah terbabit. Dalam mengharungi cabaran itu, UNHCR adalah organisasi yang dipertanggungjawabkan menjaga kebajikan pelarian termasuk memantau aktiviti atau kegiatan mereka di negara ini. Namun, kemampuan dan kebolehan UNHCR sering dipersoalkan. Untuk kafe Ahad minggu ini, wartawan Shazwa Amsa menemu pual wakil UNHCR di Malaysia, Richard Towell bagi memperjelaskan hala tujuh organisasi dan lingkungan tugas mereka bagi memastikan nasib pelarian mendapat pembelaan sewajarnya. I think that's a problem around the world today uh, is how do we have a more positive view of refugees? Uh, we need to remember that refugees had no choice but to leave their homes and their own countries because of war or because of very serious uh, conflict uh, or persecution. So they didn't choose to come to countries like Malaysia, they had to because of war. And I think it it would help if ordinary people and good Malaysians could have a better understanding of the differences between refugees and migrants. The migrants come here because they want to get work or because they want to have some other kind of improvement. Refugees have no choice. Uh, and the other thing is if ordinary people understood that refugees don't impact negatively on the country but actually make positive contributions, uh, I think also there would be a different view of of how they're treated. For example, we know that many refugees in Malaysia are working. Uh illegally but they're contributing to the economy uh, there's not many places in Kuala Lumpur where you would go today and not meet a refugee either in the restaurants or cleaning or doing a lot of the the 3D work that Malaysians don't want to do so they suffer from a very unfortunate and unfair reputation when the reality is they're victims uh, they need our help and uh, they deserve support and that's the message that we have uh, with the Malaysian people and with the Malaysian government. Well, I think there's two things. One is uh, we do our best to support 150,000 people. That is a very large number of ordinary refugees, men, women and children that we do our best to to, to help. Uh, and we do that without any support. The government of Malaysia is not really involved uh, in anything to do with refugee protection the numbers of non-governmental organizations involved is very very small so we do what we can with very limited resources uh, to help refugees now of course there are going to be a few who are unhappy uh, as there are in any society there are people who are unhappy about work and about health and about many aspects of society but what i can tell you is we're doing our best uh, with the resources that we've got we we really believe that we're doing a fine job uh to help over 150,000 people in this country so we're we're proud of that uh we'll do our best to help other people but we're very proud of the work that we do here well globally the challenges are enormous because there are so many conflicts around the world there are 65 million people today who have been displaced from their houses ordinary women and kids and and parents who can't go home because their homes have been destroyed so Uh, the challenges on the global stage are enormous and like anywhere Malaysia sees that of the 150,000 people here they all need help and and what we would like to see is a, a a stronger partnership between the people and government of Malaysia and UNHCR working together to try and find a better life for people as long as they're in Malaysia and a better more secure life when they leave Malaysia Well if you if you look at who we're talking about we're we're talking about 57,000 Rohingya uh and Malaysia the Malaysia government has become the champion of the Rohingya in the region saying that their situation in Myanmar is very very difficult so we all know that they can't go home uh and it's going to be difficult for them to go somewhere else so the the question really is how can we make life a little bit better and more stable for them here Life is not a luxury here. Life is very tough. 
Uh, we need to remember that under the law, uh, Rohingya refugees are illegal. They can't work. Uh, their kids don't go to main schools. They can't afford the healthcare system. So life here is very, very difficult for, for them. It's not, a, it's not a soft, easy place for people if they have no rights. So that's why we're encouraging a, a, a better systematic way of managing them, one that addresses law and order and crime and uh, border control, but also makes life more stable for refugee. It, it does happen. The, you have a very large uh, mixed migrant population in Malaysia. Uh, many people coming in the past, not so much now, but many people coming across the borders in an illegal, irregular way. And we do know that smugglers and traffickers have been very active in bringing people to Malaysia over the last 10 years. Uh, smugglers uh, are one category, but traffic traffickers are the worst because they are cruel, brutal, exploiting of people, vulnerability, if you, particularly women and children. And uh, trafficking involves forcing people to do things they don't want to do, to work, child prostitution, to uh, sexual uh, favors for money. Uh, the, the, the crimes and the brutality of the traffickers in the region are very difficult to understand. They're, they're inhuman in what they do to people and we need to work closely with governments in the region to, to deal with the, the crime and the criminals but also the victims. We need to address both criminals and victims in, in, in our response. On, on trafficking, Malaysia is doing uh, quite a lot these days to deal with the problem. There, it's not related to our work, but Malaysia is currently um, being graded as, as what we call TIP2, the Trafficking in Persons Grade 2 watch list by the United States, which means it's, a, it's an area where there are still problems, an area where things need to be, to be worked on. Uh, we do know refugees are caught up in the trafficking and smuggling networks, sometimes as criminals, uh, but often as victims. So even, even refugee community members are involved in the trafficking sometimes. So uh, there's a lot of money to be made in this. And if we find refugees being involved in these things, then we want to make sure they don't get the sort of protection that we offer the victims. But I, I believe now that Malaysia and Thailand and other countries in the region understand how serious this issue is and are now taking steps to address it. It's, uh, it's a national problem, it's a regional problem, it's an international problem.